Final clip from the debate, Keir and Rebecca Long-Bailey talking about Palestine. We've spoken rightfully a lot about anti-Semitism, but what about the rights of the Palestinian people? And I want to hear what you guys think of that. Keir Starmer. We can stand up and we should stand up for Palestinian rights. Um, and that can perfectly well be done without being anti-Semitic. These two things are not in conflict, and the suggestion that they are is just wrong, I think. But you're absolutely right to raise this, because we do have a dispossessed, dispossessed uh, Palestinian uh, people, and we have an insecure Israel, and, and I don't think anybody can pretend that this is a state of affairs that is possibly right in the world, uh, and we need to do something about it. Standing up for the rights of Palestinians is the right thing for our party to do, and we've always done that. And I believe in a secure Israel alongside a viable state of Palestine. But I also think that the conflict must be settled on the basis of international law, human rights and social justice. 80% of Palestinians are reliant on humanitarian aid, so we should continue calling for an end to the blockade and the illegal settlements that we see in the Palestinian West Bank and in Gaza. And I'll never apologise for standing up for the rights of Palestinian people, but at no point should it ever be conflated with anti-Semitism. There should always be two separate issues. We've, we've mentioned that it, at times, Keir Starmer has been better than Rebecca long when it comes to issues such as anti-Semitism because he's been less inclined to defer. Like mm. he, he seems like because he's an intellectually confident person and also to be fair, because he feels less like the moment he says something off script, he's going to be destroyed by yeah. the entire establishment, which is obviously what Rebecca Long Bailey is so worried about. He's also older, which right? Is, I mean, he's, yeah, almost, he's almost 20 years but, older. But which is why he can have the confidence to say, I'm not a Zionist, whereas Rebecca <laughs> Long Bailey says, I am. Yeah. Uh, and even on the drugs question, which we haven't shown a clip to, there was, there was a moment where they were asked, would you legalize cannabis? Keir Starmer said, oh, I'd consider criminalizing cannabis. Rebecca Long Bailey just said, like, no, <laughs> because I think she doesn't, she doesn't want to open any more fronts because enough people are attacking her already. But on, on that issue there, Rebecca Long Bailey did so much better than Keir Starmer. And that's because, you know, Keir Starmer was asked a question by someone in the audience who was obviously incredibly concerned that the debate when it comes to anti-Semitism has come to a point where the rights of Palestinians are being, you know, ignored. Mm. We're telling Palestinians that if you talk about the fact that your grandparents were excluded from their homes because of their ethnicity mm. and you think that's racist, then you're the racist. Mm. You know, it's like telling a Native American, you think America's racist, you're the racist. It's, exactly you know, it's, the it's fucking bananas, it's right? Exactly so the there's same. someone in the audience who's like, we've, we've entered this upside down world where Palestinians are being called racist for, say, for saying true statements, mm. right? For saying we were displaced. Yeah, and um, Keir Starmer's like, well, we, we can be anti, we can be pro-Palestine without being anti-Semitic. <laughs> that's not quite his voice, is it? I'll work on my Keir Starmer impression. You did the nasal yeah, thing. Well. Kind of um, but then, he's, and then, but then his, his analysis of Israel-Palestine is like, there is a dispossessed people in, in Palestine and there is an insecure Israel. It's like, that just makes it sound like there's this sort of equal battle, oh, both sides, what are we going to do? Yeah. You know? And at least Rebecca long puts down on the table, of course we want a secure Israel. And of course, Palestinians are dispossessed. But the real fucking issue here is that we need international law to be followed. And who's not following international law? Israel. I mean, I'm, putting, I'm sort of adding a few words here, but that was, that was really the point of her answer, right? She's, she's talking about what's going on in Gaza. She's talking about the situation on the ground so that we don't forget what matters. Whereas in that situation, again, it comes down to what are you comfortable talking about? And yeah. as a left wing person, what you're often comfortable <clears throat> talking about is injustice and fighting and struggle. And Keir Starmer sort of says, well, there's a difficult situation. Well, also, it's like, a difficult situation how do we help the Palestinians? On. Well, look, you can support Palestinian sort of self-determination without being anti-Semitic. True. That's not answering the question. And like, you know, uh, Lisa and Andy, when they were talking about inequality, talks about Jeff Bezos and somebody who works for Amazon on, you know, poverty pay. Mm. Let's talk about somebody that lives in the Gaza Strip. It's basically been an open air prison since 2007. Nobody can get in or out. It's basically under blockade. It's GDP per capita hasn't moved for 20 years. It's actually poorer now than it was then. It's basically in permanent recession. Journalists can't get in there. You know, it's open warfare, effectively economic warfare that's being waged on these poor people. I mean, this is nuts. And if you even talk about it, oh my God. I mean, come on, this is outrageous. But yeah, Kistama, Kistama can't do it. And by the way, Israel isn't insecure. It's never been more milit militarily supreme. It has nuclear weapons. How many countries have nuclear weapons, right? 
Uh, and the whole, the politics of Likud... Which I mean, is, it's got a huge fucking wall around it. It's and, a very secure... And, got, and, a, got, and a very effective missile defense yeah. system. You know, it's like the most... In, in a way, it's one of the most secure countries on earth. Right? I mean, it's not... You know, Britain's lucky enough to be an island, right? So yeah. it's, it's very hard to yeah. fire rockets at Britain. Yeah. But, you know, it's the, the military industrial complex in Israel is fucking huge. Well, for a country of 10 million, Pal- like, easily Palestin- the biggest in the world. Palestinians sort of have demonstrations where... that, Like, the, the biggest threat to Israel at the moment is Palestinians attaching you know, like flaming rags to kites. It's like, you know, your your country is not that... <laughs> if, if, if the biggest threat to your, your national security is some protesters who, you know, also, this is the March of Return. These are people who are getting shot dead. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. More than 100 of them shot dead, yeah. right? And and the, the defense of Israel for why it was legitimate to shoot them dead was because they were they were they were attacking our security with with kites with flaming rags. <laughs> By on the them. way, guys, like, this country it's like, Israel Israel is the world's second largest manufacturer of drones. Like it's a very you know technologically advanced. It's a basically it's a martial use the drone society. to shoot down the kite and leave the fucking Palestinians alone. Maybe that would be a start. But it's like it? yeah, it's just it's just unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Uh, yeah, stuff about. Uh, the politics of Likud, which has been the sort of dominant Israeli party for the last 25, 30 years, it's premised upon there not being a viable Palestinian state. Mm. That's the basis of the politics of Likud, which is also the basis of Netanyahu's politics. I'm- Nobody says this. You can be for, you know, Israeli, you know, they exist, by the way. By the way, the PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, they accept the existence of Israel. So does Egypt. They wouldn't call themselves Zionists. These are two very separate things. The PLO aren't Zionists. <laughs> they absolutely, you know, accept the existence of Israel and the fact it should continue to exist. Oh my God, this is, I was just looking up because I wanted to look up what they call the flaming kites. They call them incendiary kites. But then you've got this fucking New York Times article, right? <laughs> Maybe Unable to stop, I suppose it's probably too late to get it up, but New York Times, this is the first thing that comes up about flaming kites. Unable to stop flaming kites, Israel moves to choke off Gaza commerce. So it's like, you know, they... they, they <laughs> Oh, Israel's so insecure because there's some flaming rags on kites, kites. so we're going to block their entire economy and put them under siege. <laughs> it's not and, funny. And shoot them. It's not funny. But I mean, it's just the, the fact that you can stand up there and say, oh, it's, Palestinians have been dispossessed, but Israel's insecure. It's like, oh, fucking hell, get a grip. But also, like, you know, Fox tells us to hurry up. Israel occupied South Lebanon in the 1980s. It, it, it's occupied bits of, you know, the Golan Heights. It's occupied lots of other countries. Nobody, like, they're... They're, like you say, it's just unbelievable. Short of actually being surrounded by water, it couldn't be more secure. 